Good news! I have the dub. So from episode 3 on, we're going to be doing that. And I watched the first two episodes to acclimate myself, and it was pretty easy. It wasn't much of an adjustment. The dub is quite good. So yeah, here we go with episode 3. Alchemy. The science of understanding, deconstructing, and reconstructing matter. It is impossible to create something out of nothing. If one wishes to obtain something, something of equal value must be given. So I'm really intrigued by this idea of alchemy. I understand that it's based on historical science or pseudoscience or whatever, but without seeing much of the show, I feel like there's maybe more to it than that, or maybe something thematically relevant. In some ways, I feel like being a person and humanity building society and the universe exists as sort of a fractal. They're all working in the same system where things are naturally atrophying or in decline. But at the same time, we are actively working to build up. Like our bodies decay, but as our bodies decay, we become better people, hopefully. And while society always has major challenges and while things always appear to be getting worse, in the long term, perhaps they're actually getting better. The universe also is in a state of entropy, but at the same time, it's building things. Like, we exist. And so there are these two forces running counter to each other. And one big question I have, just philosophically, is are they equal or is the building more than the loss? Is that a weird question? Yes, it is. Am I overthinking it? Absolutely. I'll have to wait and see what they do with it or if it even means anything. I don't know. <laughs> Damn, this version doesn't have the lyrics. How am I going to learn the words? This is going to be tough. God's children who live upon this land. Ooh, getting into religion? Hey! Easy, I didn't mean nothing by it. Sorry, accident. We'll fix it. How's that? It's smashed to hell. Watch and learn, Gramps. This seems like a very trivial use of an amazing power. Pretty good. So you two are alchemists, right? I've heard of them. Then maybe you've heard of us. We're the Elric brothers. The Elric brothers, you say? Right, I do know that name. The full metal alchemist, Edward Elric, is that right? Wow. <laughs> so you're the Elric. <laughs> he loves it. He loves it. Oh no! Not again! Oh man, I feel so bad for Edward. It's not me. Uh -huh. What? You mean it's the little guy then? This is never gonna end. Never. Episode 3, City of Heresy. We were lost until he came to town and began teaching us all the ways of the sun god Leto. He grants eternal life to the souls of the faithful. He can even resurrect the dead. His miracles are proof that what he says is true. So this guy's claiming he can bring the dead back to life? Now that's something I gotta see. Yeah, it's got some special importance for Ed. <laughs> so he's an alchemist? Right. But somehow he's ignoring the law of equivalent exchange. Yes. Yeah. Oh, is that a philosopher's stone? Bingo. To know God is to know hope. If we believe in divine grace, then through him all things are possible. If you believed, I'm sure Lito would bless you and make you grow taller. What's that supposed to mean? Easy, brother. She's just trying to help. Right for the jugular. Ammonia, 4 liters. Lime, 1.5 kilograms. Phosphorus, 800 grams. Salt, 250 grams. Relatable. This is me in high school. That list represents the complete chemical makeup of the human body for the average adult. It's been calculated to the last microgram, but still, there's never been one reported case of successfully creating a human life. And you're telling me something modern science can't do, you can do with prayer? This is so interesting already. Because Edward has very personal stakes in this. There's got to be like a whirlwind of emotions for this. Because one, as someone who thinks highly of himself, if someone actually can pull this off, and he, he made that huge mistake the way he did, that's got to be scary. But also part of him maybe has hope. Which is what this girl's talking about, right? Having hope. And that's scary for someone who's been so destroyed. As it turns out, humans are pretty cheap. No, oh, that's blasphemy. People are... We are all children of God, created in His image. Whoa. <laughs> you have to understand, alchemists are scientists. We don't believe in unprovable concepts like creators or gods. We observe the physical laws that govern this world to try to learn the truth. We're really getting into it now. Through the application of science, we have in many ways been given the power to play gods ourselves. So you're putting yourself on the same level as God? That's just sheer arrogance. You know, there's an old myth about a hero who flew on wings made of wax. He thought he could touch the sun, but when he got too close, his wings melted and he came crashing back down to Earth. Whoa, that is, this scene is just packed. I don't even know where to begin. He's making reference to the sun god, but that's also him, right? He's the one who flew too close to the sun. I'm not sure to what extent he was referring to himself there. There's a lot that can be said about this science versus religion conversation. But let's see where the episode goes. Damn, and this is a problem. Edward Elric, the full metal alchemist, has come to call on us. That's him? The man in the armor? Hmm. Dressing the part, it would seem. 
But why would a state alchemist be here in Lior? Surely they can't have found out about our plans. Oh boy. We won't take too much of his time. Good, then it's agreed. We'll make this quick. Oh, what the heck? Rose, these heathens have come to ensnare and discredit the father. They're evil. This is God's will. Well, like you said, let's make this oh. quick! <laughs> ah, the full metal alchemist. This music. Welcome to the home of our sacred order. Father Cornella! This girl's in deep. My, you really are quite the incorrigible heathen, aren't you? Rose, dear. <laughs> yes, Father. Now, child, I want you to shoot the Full Metal Alchemist. Mother, I can't do that. Shoot him, Rose. It's God's will. You said if I had faith, you'd bring him back to life. No! Why him? Damn it, I'm the Full Metal Alchemist! <laughs> <laughs> it's me! It's the short one. Oh, no. I love it. I love it. Oh no, Al. Good. God Leto is pleased. You have done well, my child. Now pick up the gun and shoot the other as well. It's a demanding God. An empty suit of armor that walks and speaks? Do you still doubt it, Rose? This unholy thing is an abomination. Evil of this kind must be purged! What the hell is that? My chimera should be up to the task. Why do you have a chimera? Awesome. Circle. Your little spirit oh, damn. is no match for Chimera Claws that tear through wire. <laughs> you shredded my pants. Is that we're going to lose a piece of clothing in every episode? You're armed. A brother trapped in armor. I see. Everyone's figuring it out. You did it, didn't you? Cool. Full Metal Alchemist. Cornello. Oh, Full poor Rose. She's just depressed. Rose. This is the price Poor Rose. <laughs> Rose is just caught in the middle of all this. Rose isn't ready. She just wants her husband back. These fools attempted human transmutation. The greatest taboo for any alchemist. In their arrogance, they tried to bring someone dead back to life. He thought he could touch the sun, but when he got too okay. close, his yeah. wings melted and he came crashing back down to Earth. That was a very self-aware moment from Edward. Father, we just want you to hand over the stone before you get hurt. Aw, oh, so nice. If you fools are really so eager to play God, then perhaps I should send you to feed him instead! Is it a Gatling gun? Me and God, we don't get along too well. Even if I went, he'd probably just send me right back here. It's weird because Edward actually has met God. He met the everything, right? The the truth. And he did get sent back. Edward's the most qualified person to talk about this, but he didn't have the best experience, obviously. Don't you stand there after them! These heathens seek to harm the order! They must be stopped! That feeling when your priest comes out with a Gatling gun. What are you gonna do, boy? You're unarmed and outnumbered. This is the most heavily armed church? <laughs> Maybe not. Is this what church is like? <laughs> I might start going to church. <laughs> Whoa. Don't go easy just because he's a kid, you got that? <laughs> Al's so overpowered. What do you think of Cornella now, Rose? He just opened fire. All we wanted was to see our mom smile again, but our transmutation failed. Do you see it? My brother drew that with his own blood. It won't be easy, but that's the path we chose. All we can do is keep moving. Nice. It's a beautiful speech from, from Al. It's nice to hear it from him, you know, his understanding of it. You know, I've watched that scene, the mother scene, a bunch of times now, just from editing and also rewatching it for the dub. It just gets better every time. Like, you know, these poor kids, they had the purest of intentions. They're just so young, they didn't know any better. And it cost them more than what they got. I mean, they really got nothing. They got horror. Ed nearly lost his brother and has to carry that weight from now on. Tell me what I need to know and I'll be on my way. Or we could get the military involved. <sighs> Cornello cares too much about his operation. I'm slowly building an army, a legion of holy warriors, unafraid to die. In a few more years, I'll be ready to unleash this mindless horde upon the world. Yeah? <laughs> Wait, what are you laughing about? I knew it. You really are a novice, aren't you? <laughs> you don't mean that! There were never any miracles, Rose. That's what he was doing with the bell. Genius. Why are you? How long? How long is <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> I won't be disgraced like this! Now, boy, 
Where you can transform. Final boss time. Oh yeah. Fist of God, huh? That's what you want, you can have it. Nice, he's gonna transform the Leto statue. It's poetic. <laughs> Punched by God. Punched by the sun god. Just give me the philosopher's stone. What the hell? It's supposed to be perfect material. Does it have something to do with Edward himself? Because this is the second time he's come into contact with the philosopher's stone, and both times they've disintegrated. You mean we went through all this, risked our lives for this one possible chance, and it's a fake? Yeah, but he did some good too, though. And what about the stone? A phony, just like him. Was it a phony? She's lost it. I mean, she had already lost it. You want to keep it for yourself, don't you? So you can try to bring your mother back again. You shut up. People don't come back from the dead, Rose. That hope was all I had left. What am I supposed to believe in now? Tell me what to do. You're strong enough to make your own path. Wow. That was a surprisingly powerful scene. I didn't expect that. My heart goes out to Rose because she's placing all her faith in this religion to help her get through something that she just can't cope with. And that's something Edward can relate to deeply because he's sort of been in her shoes before. And he mocks their religious faith, and in this case it's for good reason because this guy's a psycho. But it's not like he's operating without faith. He also has to have something to place his beliefs in. And there's no escaping that. Like, this episode maybe takes a shot at religion. But it's not like this kind of blind faith is limited to religion. People believe all sorts of things as coping mechanisms. Beliefs about oneself, beliefs about society, they're often used as substitutes for actually difficult processes like, you know, having emotional breakdowns and like actually looking honestly at who you are or feeling a sense of moral superiority. These things are not relegated to religion. I think what's more important than the thing itself is the way it's practiced and the way it's viewed. And to what degree are you actively pursuing the truth in it? And, and to what degree does it make you a better, a better person who stands on your own two feet? And to what degree does it make you stuck? Everybody believes in some kind of dogma. It's just a question of like, how much is it an escape from pain? And how much of it is like an inspiration? How much of it is something that makes you strive to be a better person and lead a more fulfilled life? So Ed's not out of the woods. It's not like Ed's belief in science is going to get him somewhere spiritually meaningful. And I think that's part of why it's so painful for him to look at Rose is because she's sort of a mirror of himself, even if it's a less realized, perhaps older version of himself. Oh boy. We better leave town. That damn brat, it's all ruined. Everything I worked for. Yes, all that hard work for nothing. I knew we should have just incited a little rebellion. Oh no, you're about to get eaten by gluttony. I've seen gluttony for five seconds and I know this guy does not mess around. He will eat you. Now you two, everyone has mocked me. I won't stand for... I'd say this concludes our business. Father won't be pleased. In any case, it's time we started thinking about our next move. He did eat him, I told you. <laughs> so it's been pointed out to me that there are sometimes post credit scenes, so I will be watching from now on. Even if I cut it, I, I'm watching it, I'm watching it. So I really enjoyed that episode. This show does a great job with these poignant moments between characters. I thought the scene with Ed and Rose is pretty moving. And it's super relatable even without the religious fanaticism. Like, just the idea of having tunnel vision for something that you just desperately want to believe and you stake everything on that belief. That if only this happens, or if only I do this, or if only I believe this, the things I want will come true, or the pain that I am desperately trying to shake myself from will disappear. But it's not the case. There's no easy salvation for life's most significant problems. And there's a temptation to engage in this sort of like escapism. And it can take so many different forms. It's such a pervasive and insidious thing. This tendency will hide in so many different ways. It can take the form of total faith in something. It can also take the form of nihilism, right? Like they're all different versions of the same thing. It's beliefs to reconcile the, the pain of reality, the harshness of truth. And in so many cases, we're just like hopping from one to another. And it's hard to find things that are actually significantly meaningful in the long term. It's a never ending challenge and it's really easy to get stuck. And I feel like it's, it's a real danger. It's something I'm concerned about because once you go down a certain path, the longer you're on that path, sometimes the harder it is to get out of it. And so these things, the beliefs that you have about whatever it may be, they become dogma and replacing them with other things that are a little bit more nuanced maybe is hugely threatening. And so Ed isn't out of the woods. He's still in many ways like flying too close to the sun. He has his own pet beliefs that's driving his entire being. And I think a lot of that is about trying to undo the damage that he feels he's done. But long rants aside, I really enjoyed this episode. I'm enjoying the dub too, for all you dub fans. But yeah, so that's it for episode three. I'll see you very soon for episode four.